Praise the Lord. Well, I won't do a prayer because it's already been done. And uh, I accept what God's going to do. And I do accept what God's going to do for that little one. You know? We do believe in miracles, don't we? That's three of us. <laughs> we do believe in miracles. Amen. What God has done. The reading. I'm going to do a reading too for you. It's found in Acts. It's found in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were. Praise God. The message will be short. Come on, you should cheer then. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be short. Doug said to me, 10 minutes or. Well, it might be the or bit, but I'm not sure yet. No, it'll be, I'll do my best to try and keep to uh, time. I did have a joke to tell about long, part, long, long sermons, but I won't do that because it's a bit flippant. Now, I've been a Christian for 63 years. 63 years. Um, I gave my heart to Jesus, asking him for forgiveness for the sins I've committed. And do you know what? I'm still joyful to die. Hallelujah, what he's done in my life. I hope we're all like that. I hope everyone here today knows Jesus as their saviour. Miriam said to me, before you come out, stick to your notes. <laughs> well, I've, I've already gone off it. <laughs> I better apologise to my wife. Anyway, um, well, anyway, I gave my heart to the Lord, and years went by, I, I, I was asked to uh, give a testimony, and I did, with fear and trembling. Now, you might look at me now and think, fear and trembling, rubbish, he's not like that. Well, I was, I dearly was. And then a few years went by, and I was asked to uh, give a word, uh, I gave it at my church, of course, my then church, other churches, and here. Um, but why am I telling you this? Well, I stand here this morning because it's the very first time, and probably the last, I've ever asked to preach. I've never ever, that's the gospel truth, I've never once asked a pastor, a vicar, uh, can I preach today? Never once. And the reason for that is because God has given me, I believe, a word which I feel is of great significance, but more of urgency. I'm sure you'll agree with me that, that uh, we can listen to a sermon which in the main we agree with, but we have, what shall I say, certain reservations with certain aspects of the, of the sermon. So I wonder whether well, that might be the case today. Oh, well, I'm pretty sure it will be. That you'll have some doubts. Well, you know, I needn't have read those four verses from Acts. Needn't have bothered. Because there were four words that leapt out at me as I studied for this, four words that struck home to me, and they were these. They were all together. They were all together. Yes, physically, but I believe more spiritually. They were all together as they gathered in that room in Acts. As I see it, for the years there has existed in the, the church a great division. A division between those who pursue strong biblical teaching and those who have majored on the evidence of God's presence with the gifts of the Spirit in operation. Friends, it's not a case. It's not a case of one is right 
and the other is wrong. They're both right. They're both right. But, but, God, in this day, I feel, is calling them to come together. To come together. Word and spirit. See, I'm shaking. Look at that. Is that the spirit or is it my nerves? I don't know. You know, for each of these, word and spirit, if they stand in isolation, they have very little value, as I see it, both lacking in power. Now, you know, in nature, there's sun and rain, and they both give beauty to this earth. They give balance to nature. Likewise, we need both word and spirit. We need them both. Not one and not the other. And I liken the, 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 the word to be like the sun and the spirit to be like the rain. One without the other can cause a natural disaster. You know, too much sun, we saw it. <laughs> it makes you wonder if we're ever going to get it again. Last summer, we had that burnt earth. Uh, all the grass was, was brown, and, and uh, then we've had floods since then where vegetables have rotted in the fields. So what am I saying in the spiritual sense is simply this. And by the way, these aren't my words, these, what I'm going to say now. I don't know who said it, but I read it. All word and no spirit, we dry up. All spirit and no word, we blow up. But with both word and spirit, we grow up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you can all say that. Hallelujah. Good. I'll go home now. No, I won't. In Matthew 22, verse 29... It's interesting that Jesus said to the Sadducees, you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. In other words, they were ignorant of both. Well, sadly, in the church today, it's somewhat different. It seems to me it's a case of knowing one, but not or ignoring the other. With exceptions, the church today marches, as I see it, to a different drumbeat. A different drumbeat from the early church. One half on the word, the other on the spirit. And like a military army fighting on two fronts, having divided its forces, it's failing miserably. So surely, no one believes that the church is a power in the land. Because it isn't. It isn't. Those on the word side will say that God, God's honour will not be restored until we get back to the faith. As the book of Jude puts it, once for all delivered to the saints. They would say we need clear Bible teaching in the pulpit, returning to justification by faith alone and the inner testimony of the Holy Spirit by which we know that the Bible is the word of God. So friends, is there anything wrong with that? Can you see anything wrong with that? I can't. I think it's right. I think it's absolutely right. Totally correct. So what's the view of the other side? Well, it's straightforward, really. God's name will never be restored until we get back to the, to the experience of the apostles and demonstrated in the book of Acts with signs, wonders, and miracles and gifts of the Spirit in operation. Like when they prayed, the very building was shaken. The very building was shaken. When those that walked in the very shadow of Peter were healed, were healed. 
they would say, until we experience that level of power, the church will continue to know little, if any, influence in the world. So can anyone see anything wrong with that? I can't. I can't see anything wrong with that. Anyone here find anything wrong with that? No, don't answer if you do, fine. But to repeat myself, the church just about exists on one or the other, the Word or the Spirit. It seems that way to me. We are fortunate here at Christ Church that we have, and, and for that matter, always had a ministry team that are firmly based on the Word of God and also having a desire, a desire to see the Holy Spirit moving among us. People with the gifts of the Spirit in operation and the power of the Holy Spirit in their preaching ministry with signs following. Friends, is that your desire? Is that your desire? Are you like me? Are you discontent with the status quo? Are you discontent with the status quo, satisfied with things as they are? Or do we hunger for the power of God's Word and the power of the Holy Spirit to come together in evidence amongst us? Well, I, that's what I want. That's what I want. I wish I'd have gone to a theological college and I wouldn't be so hesitant and a bit wobbly. But there you are, I haven't. I praise God for the move of the Spirit and the Word here, but I guess, I guess I'm a sort of a Dickensian figure, really. Now, <laughs> not because I'm 84. I know I don't look it. I know that. You're thinking he's not. Well, I am. I'm 84. And a lot of the characters in Dickens was, uh, were uh, fairly old folks, you know. Well, I feel like I'm one of them. Now, before you get up and say Bill Sykes <laughs> or Fagin, it isn't either, though. I feel I've got a sort of a feeling of Oliver Twist. Can anybody remember what Oliver Twist said? Yeah. He came up with his bowl and he said, please, sir, can I have some more? Well, that's me. I don't mean for food, because you see I'm all right with that. Please, looking up to God, can I have some more? Not earthly food, but spiritual. Seeing souls saved, bodies healed, and the prophetic word much in evidence. Is this for today? Well, I think you ought to believe that, because it is. It is for today. It's for today. I don't know if any of you have heard of a man called Smith Wigglesworth. Good. Well, he was a great man of God in evangelism, in healing, and he said this, the secret, secret of spiritual success is a hunger that persists. It's an, he still said this, it's an awful condition to be satisfied with one's spiritual attainments. God was and is looking for hungry, thirsty people. That's what Smith Wigglesworth says. And my question is this. Is that me? Is that you? Do you hunger after more of, the, more of God in your life? I'm trying to cut things out because I've, I've done me 10 minutes, I'm sure. Now, I'll give you another quote from Smith Wigglesworth. And it was a prophecy he gave saying this. When the Word and the Spirit come together there will be the biggest movement of the Holy Spirit that this nation, that this world has ever seen, making way 
for a worldwide revival. That's what I put down here, and I was sitting there, and I thought to myself, yes, that's true. And then I said to myself, Lord, don't start it in the world. Start it in me. Start it in you. You can't revive the dead. Well, Jesus can, but you can't revive the dead. But you can certainly revive us who are perhaps sometimes a little lukewarm. I know I am. I'll be honest, I'll put my hand up. I put my hand up. Now time's gone and I'm going to finish with this. Hooray, they said. In Ezekiel's vision of the valley of the dry bones, you remember that story in the, in the Bible? Well, when the wind of the Spirit came, the bones were not blown away as if being dead and useless and not wanted. Of course, God could have done that and then created new people. He could have done that. But what happened? The bones came together, were clothed in flesh, and God breathed his life into them. That spoke to me that God's purpose is to renew the dry bones. To renew the dry bones the dry bones of existing Christian conditions and start a holy fire and I want to see this with all my heart start a holy fire that no man dare I say no bishop <laughs> could ever extinguish that's what God wants to do yes I'm excited Yes, I'm excited what God wants to do amongst us, amongst God's people. For when the Holy Spirit falls on the pulpit, on the people, with signs following, word and spirit, in other words, coming together, we are going to see something mighty happen. I agree with Wigglesworth. He was right, absolutely right. And my cry is, Lord, bring it on. Bring it on. I'm ready. Amen. Amen. I would add a third category. There are word churches, there are spirit churches, and there are sadly many churches that have neither. And yet, in John 4, Jesus says to the Samaritan woman on the mountain, yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. And brothers and sisters, it's already started, Mick. It's already started. In the US, there's a college called Asbury where they're still worshipping. They started about four weeks ago and they're still in that place of revival. That has spilled out to other colleges in the US. It's going on in Australia. It's going on in Uganda. And Jude, if we had time, could tell you it's going on in London. The spirit is breaking out in the world. And not amongst you and I, but amongst younger people as well, all around the world. As you said, bring it on. Bring it on. Because everything of God is good. Everything of God is good. And we want more of it. We want more of it. Amen?